All right, so it's time for another DuckTales Capitalism is Good episode. Like, the infernal internship of Mark Beeks probably doesn't feel like that at first, but it definitely is, right? Like, the episode literally ends with the titular Mark Beeks becoming a billionaire by doing practically nothing, getting a big mic drop moment when he revealed how he became a billionaire by basically doing nothing, and then Dewey and Huey defeating a villain by tossing a briefcase at him full of money that another character, that was stolen from another character who has so much money that he didn't even notice the loss of like $20 million. And like, I didn't hate this episode, right? It was an entertaining episode. The basic premise of it is that Huey and Dewey compete for an internship at Duck Google while Scrooge goes on a date with his hate boyfriend. And there's something about a corporate hostage situation or whatever that was mildly entertaining. There was one gag that recurred throughout that plot point that was pretty funny, but it also got old after a while. Though I guess the way they concluded it was fine. And I found the whole competition between Dewey and Huey to be absolutely hysterical. Watching Dewey fail upwards to the point that it started to literally drive Huey insane was genuinely hilarious. The interactions between them had me laughing out loud multiple times. And I guess Mark Peaks isn't interesting enough. I mean, he's not technically the antagonist of this one, but I, I, he, I, he definitely gave off an antagonistic vibe, right? He, he feels, he feels like a negative force in the story. I hate him so much, but he was entertaining. He was entertaining while he was being that, being that thing that I hate so much. <laughs> He's very full of himself, narcissistic, very new money, and not in that he just recently made his money, which he did, but in that he made his money in new and hip ways. He's very hip and current. And I found him annoying, and I was definitely supposed to find him annoying, so the episode definitely succeeded in that. But <laughs> by the end of the episode, this guy who literally exploits children for their labor throughout the course of this episode. That is a thing he literally did. Gets off scot-free. He doesn't lose his fortune. And, like, there's the implication that he's going to be subjected to a horrible, life-threatening scheme. But that scheme is going to be enacted upon him by someone who is generally incompetent. That's, like, th that's, that's canon. That's their entire personality is that they're Scottish and incompetent. So I really get the sense that he's going to be just fine. And yet I'm looking forward to seeing him as a villain in other episodes, I would hope. Because in the end, Huey and Dewey screw him over. Not in a major way, but in a way that's major to him. And I could definitely see him wanting to get back at them, so that could be fun. But I didn't really find the Scrooge stuff in this one entertaining. I can see why somebody would, and I definitely appreciate if you do, which is just like all of the various spoofs in this episode on modern corporate culture. I didn't find them all that amusing, but I could definitely see where somebody else might. And I guess the corporate espionage thug, who is named Falcon Graves, was entertaining enough as a character too, and I do hope he recurs in the show in some form or another. But really, as much as this one entertained me, I was kind of checking out through at least as much of the episode. And I absolutely hated the ending. You guys should know me well enough at this point to know that I'm very anti-capitalism. I genuinely believe that capitalism is the root of all of humanity's problems. I'm not lying. I'm not exaggerating. I believe that every single one of humanity's problems can be traced back to capitalism. And yet this episode ends with a reveal that Mark Beeks is basically a grown-up Dewey being irresponsible and coasting through life and faking it until you make it, except that he's a grown-up who has basically unlimited resources. And Dewey giving a speech to Huey where he says, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit because I don't remember the, the exact quote, but he says basically that people who fake it till they make it have to fake it because smart people like Huey are so good at making it. And it's said in a very, like, heartfelt, emotionally vulnerable, this is a confession kind of way, and I get the sense that we're supposed to feel bad for Dewey. When, first of all, we know that Dewey is, like, 
skilled and competent at things. He's a smart character. He's not like this all the time. And also, that's not a good thing! It's not a good thing that we live in a society where someone can become obscenely wealthy by doing nothing. Because remember, while he was doing nothing, the employees under him, including literal children, were doing things. He was benefiting from that. He was exploiting that. Like, they contrast his attitude with that of Scrooge. Like, Scrooge's whole work hard for your fortune attitude is any better, but that's, as we've discussed before, not a thing that actually works. You have to come from money to become a billionaire. So we can assume that this guy comes from money. And like, yeah, I know Scrooge makes these kids work for, for advantages, right? But he's still the most wealthy person in their world. They still come from money and privilege and a place of advantage because of that. And this whole attitude reminds me so much of Elon Musk. Sorry, saying his name made me a little sick. A man who literally, he literally, he literally, he literally buys other people's ideas. He buys the right to claim that he came up with other people's ideas. That's his whole business model. And now he has accrued so much wealth. He has accrued so much wealth that he could basically do whatever he wants and get away with it. He is ruining entire ecosystems with his dumbass rocket projects, and he plans to ruin at least one other planet in our solar system if we don't stop him. He's a real-life supervillain, and this is his attitude toward things. And it's, it's the moral lesson of a kid's show. <laughs> like, Mark Beeks' attitude is not portrayed as a wholly positive thing here, but at the same time, it is compared directly to Dewey's fail upward style approach to things, and that approach to things is one of the components in beating the direct antagonist of this episode. It's, it's painted as necessary and good. It's just, you know, you have to be the good kind of fake it till you make it person, not the bad kind. Right? You gotta be the right kind of capitalist. I hated it. And it detracted from my enjoyment of the rest of the episode. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. This is gonna be a very short review. I don't have anything else to say about this episode. I'm not gonna like this show very much, though. I'm gonna have a lot of trouble liking this show overall if, like, a solid third of these episodes are like this. <laughs> like, we, we've gotten a couple episodes like this already. Maybe not like a whole third of the episodes I've actually reviewed, but it's starting to feel like there's three kinds of episodes here. There's like character-driven story episodes that aren't necessarily like a mystic adventure. Then there's mystic adventure episodes, and then there's capitalism is good episodes. <laughs> Hopefully that third category diminishes as the show goes on, or I might, I might drop this one, <laughs> unfortunately. Let me know. Let me know if it gets better. I just, I, I find... I find these very annoying, <laughs> in case you couldn't tell from my literal unraveling before my camera. I'm half considering reshooting this one and, and not being so genuine in it. We'll see how much time I have, because that will dictate whether or not I'm able to do that. <laughs> All of that said, though, what did you think of this episode? Hey, tell me how much I'm overreacting because I probably am. <laughs> Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below, and while you're down there, you might as well like the video and share it with anyone else you think would enjoy my content. Subscribe if you haven't, or unsubscribe if I annoyed you enough that you want to do so. You can also check out my social medias and my Patreon. Links to those will be in the video description. But either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later once I've calmed down a little bit.